Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create or populate a combo box with an array. This is kind of a weird topic for me because I'm not that into combo boxes, but I'm just exploring what's possible with them. And I can't find a lot of tutorials out there on them, so I'm kind of having to make my own way on this. So I appreciate your patience with that. I'm finding out that combo boxes really are pretty powerful and they have a lot of features that allow you to update them procedurally. So what that means is that we could use an array to actually populate the data in the combo box. And what you do with that data is another story, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to show you how you get this far. So I already have a combo box on the screen and it's already formatted. I'll leave a link in the description to a tutorial I did about that on how to style the combo boxes. If you come up into the level blueprint here, this is where I bring the user widget into existence. Here, I just have a user widget. If I come over here, let me stop it from simulating. I just have a canvas panel and a combo box. And look over here on the combo box, there's no data inside of it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to populate this with data outside of the widget blueprint. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to need data and somewhere to store data. And I'm just going to do it my way. There's different ways of doing this, but this is just the way I'm doing it. If you have a different way, feel free to use that way. I'm just going to call this array. It's just a blueprint actor class. And then I'm just going to come up here to variables and I'm just going to call this my array. And we're just going to set it to strings. We'll compile and save it over here. We're going to set it to an array. Compile and save that. And we'll make it instant editable like that. And that's all we got to do to create an array. And it's in this blueprint class. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this into the scene so we can reference it. It won't be seen by anybody. So now we have an array. Now what we can do with that array is come over here and put items in it. This is what's weird about it is we're putting this on a combo box, but these represent selections in the combo box. So theoretically every one of these is an option somebody might have. So think of these almost as buttons you're creating and where does this button lead? Well, that's a whole nother story. But let's just say it's some sort of um, tonality. So we'll just call it dark, medium, dark, and then we'll go medium. And this could literally be any kind of data that you can imagine. I mean, this is, and then medium light, let's say. And then the last one, let's say, is light. Like, just like that. And then we'll save that. So what we can do now is just jump into the widget blueprint. Here's our combo box. It's already a variable. We're going to jump into the graph side here. And all of this is going to be on the event construct side. Now I'm not going to show you what to do with this. Once you've created this, that's another tutorial, but this is just how to populate it. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to get the combo box and drag it onto the scene. And then what we want to do is just clear it out. So there's an option here called clear selection. And we're going to do that there. And then there's another one called clear options. So we just want to clear everything out and make sure we're starting fresh. Now what we need to do also is we actually, I got a little ahead of myself. Let me just grab this and put this up here. And over here, let me disconnect this wire real fast. We need to get a reference to our blueprint that we created with our array. So I'm just going to go here and go get actor of class right here. And we're going to search for our array right here. And this will create a reference. So then I'm going to right click here. I don't have to do this part, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to call this array ref just so we could get the reference out of here, but I'm just going to get it up there too. So just creating a copy of it. And then we'll go ahead and pop this in here. Okay, and now we're pretty much almost halfway done. We're just going to grab this array now. And we have a reference to our array with our five elements in the array. And I can just drag off of here and go get my array. Get my array right here. And then what we can do is create a for each loop. So we come up here and just go for each loop right there. We're going to drag this into here like this and then just pop the array straight into there like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our combo box again over here. And this is why I'm saying these combo boxes are really interesting. The potential they have for doing things 
procedurally. I'm going to drag up here and there's one called add options here. And all I have to do is put this in here and this in there. And that's all. Now there's another option in here also called set option. So if I drag off of here and go set, I think it's called select option, selected option here, and drag this in here like that. I have to type it in exactly. So I think it was dark was one that I had. And compile and save. And if we come in here and I click play, I can see my formatting's off. So and we'll go size to content and compile and save that. Now if I come in here and I go play, see it says dark and they're all populated just like that. Now that we have that, what can we do? Well, we can just come over here to combo box and we have this option to on selection changed. So I'm going to click that. And there's actually a node in here that makes this all work and it's called find option index. We need to create a variable to hold our selection results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm just going to call this selected item and it's a string and it can be private and we'll compile and save that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to get our combo box here, just drag it onto the scene and we're going to pull off of here and get that note I just talked about, which was find option index, this right here. We're going to set the selected item, so go select, and we're just going to plug this into here and this into here. So when we select an item, it's going to get stored in this variable over here. And then all we have to do is put this into here. And this node will essentially identify what that index value is. Now that's not going to do us very much good unless we have our array. So I'm going to come up here and get our array. And then I'm just going to drag off of here and go get my array. And then off of here, I can actually get the array, get my array, a copy of it. We always want to use a copy. And you'll see how this is expecting an index value. So all we have to do is put this in there like that. Let me pull this down just a little bit. All we need to do now that we have the essentially the index value of the selected item, the array index value of the item that we selected, we can search for this is a very powerful node called switch on int. And this is so useful for so many different things. Then all we have to do is put that value into here, plug this into here, and then we'll know which item was selected. We'll know the numerical value of which item was selected. Not only will we know that, we'll have the data in the array. So from here, we're just going to add five pins. One, two, three, four, five, like this. And I'm just showing this to show you how it would work. This could then call whatever code logic you wanted to trigger. So in this case, we're just going to get a print string here like this. And all we have to do is we can put this in here to print out whatever the results are. And literally we can plug all of these into this print string. So for any selection, it's going to fire, but the content is going to be based on whatever is in the array. And that's the whole thing right there. So just know that the selection will trigger one of these pins I'm just putting a print string in here, but this could trigger any code logic that you want. Make a call, a function call, or do whatever you want to do. Trigger something to happen on the menu or whatever. So we'll go compile and save. And if I come in here and I hit play, you'll see in the upper left corner, I have my options. I go light, see how light prints out. Medium, medium prints out. Medium light prints out. Medium dark. So you can see the potential power of using this combo box. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found it helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.